Hi, my name is Kirsten Dodson and I teach engineering at Lipscomb University. As a member of the Emerging Leaders Board at Pencil, I'm excited to introduce you all to, to the field of engineering today. You'll meet some engineers and I'll show you an engineering project that you can do at home today. So let's get started. When I say engineering, what comes to mind? Is it a construction site in hard hats? Is it someone writing code on a computer? Or maybe it's a spaceship headed to Mars. Engineering is involved in all of these and so much more. Engineers are problem solvers. We utilize our knowledge of science, math, and technology, along with creativity and teamwork to build solutions to overcome challenges. Engineers are at the forefront of solving some of the world's biggest challenges, like access to clean water, affordable healthcare options, and sustainable energy usage. To solve these problems, engineers work in teams and communicate with a wide variety of clients. We also focus on making sure that our solutions we create are safe, reliable, and sustainable. Instead of listening to me talk about engineering, let me introduce you to some of my engineering friends. Hi, my name is Margaret Rocks. I am a graduate student at Vanderbilt University in mechanical engineering. Um, specifically, I work in surgical robotics and medical devices. Um, and what I love about my job is getting to combine engineering uh, with helping people and doing cool stuff in the medical field. Um, and here is a fun example of a robot that's in my house right now because we are working from home. Hi guys, my name is Michaela Kirk. I graduated from Lipscomb University in 2015 with a civil engineering, civil engineering degree. Um, I currently work for Turner Construction, who is a general contractor in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm currently in the business development department where we, um, where I help secure projects for us to work on. Um, I absolutely love what I do. Um, I've been with them for about four years now. Um, and I decided to go into construction because I love the tangible aspect of it, to be able to walk away from a project at the end of the day and say, hey, I helped build this. Hi, my name is Daniel Jordan and I am a structural engineer for HDR. My primary responsibilities include bridge design, bridge inspection, and some bridge repair. Some things that I love about my job are uh, the complex problem solving that I get to do on a daily basis, the difference that I get to make in the world through my designs, and the new challenges that uh, different projects can face, whether it's new locations or different materials like steel or concrete, or just working with different people. There's always a new challenge each day. Hey y'all, my name is Mackenzie and I'm a project engineer at Hobson Associates. At my job, I get to manage various projects and be the middleman between the customer and the manufacturer. I love my job because I get to do fun things like visit construction sites, work with our customers, and build those relationships every day. I chose engineering because I get to use my problem solving skills not only at my job but also in my everyday life. Hi, my name's Salah and I'm a computer engineer at Dynetics. I do a lot of firmware design and computer software design, and I chose engineering because it really allows me to encounter difficult problems and find unique ways to solve new challenges that humanity has never seen before. For example, I'll soon be working on the human lander that NASA's contracted our company to go to the moon with in 2024. So I really can't wait to help put humans back on the moon. So thank you to all my friends for submitting their videos. It's awesome to hear from so many unique engineers about their jobs and why they love engineering. You may have noticed from the videos that there are a lot of different types of engineering jobs out there. Whether you're interested in building bridges or robots or code, there's a type of engineering out there for you. So now that you've met some working engineers, let's talk about what we do and how you can try out engineering today. As engineers, solving problems can be really difficult sometimes. To help us along the way, we use the engineering design process, which is kind of like a roadmap guiding us to a great solution. Check out this video that gives a fun but accurate explanation of the engineering design process. The engineering design process is a lot like making tacos. Here's how. 
Let's say you've had a long day. Maybe you've gone to class. Maybe you just got off work. Maybe you just finished an intense workout session. It's now seven o'clock and you're hungry, but you've got friends coming over in half an hour. So what do you do? You go through the engineering design process. First, you define a problem or need. In this case, the problem is you're hungry and you've got people coming over in half an hour and they might be hungry too. Next, you do some research to figure out the design requirements and your limitations. So in this case, you'd assess things like ingredients you have at hand, money you've got to spend, how much time you have before people start showing up, how many people you have to feed, and if any of those people have dietary restrictions. Once you've got a pretty solid list of criteria and constraints, you can start brainstorming ideas for solutions. Maybe you look online at nearby food options. Then, maybe you go to the fridge and you start figuring out what you can make. You weigh your options and you determine making something at home will be cheaper and faster than ordering something online. And you decide everyone likes PB&J, but you don't have gluten-free bread. Oh. But you do have corn tortillas. I guess I'll try PB&J on corn tortillas. And you make a prototype. You test out and take a bite. It's gross. But you want to make sure it's not just you, so you get others to test it out, like your roommates or family. Everyone agrees. It's gross. You ask questions and determine what's gross about it. In this case, your testers like the tortillas, but not so much the PB&J. So you go back to the kitchen and reassess. This is what engineers call iterating, making changes based on test and user feedback. You realize... I've got ingredients for tacos? Dope! So you start making some veggie tacos. You try one and think... Hmm, this is kind of dry. You have other people try it to get their feedback. Most people agree. It's kind of dry. So you go back to your kitchen and start iterating again. You find that you've got the ingredients to make guacamole. You make the guac and you add it to the tacos. You test it out and you're like... This is tasting pretty good. But some of the other testers think... It could use some spice. So you evaluate their feedback, you look in your kitchen, and you realize you don't have anything spicy. That's when you call your friend Sam who's coming over, and you're like, Hey Sam, can you bring over some hot sauce? I'm making tacos. And Sam's like, Sure. Also, I love tacos. It's now 7.30 and your friends start showing up. You tell your friends, I made tacos if you're hungry. You can add hot sauce if you want. And then you and your friends eat the tacos. They're like, these are pretty good. I'm going to Instagram that. You should share the recipe online. So you do. You've solved your hunger problem and engineered a taco party. So now that we have our roadmap, let's try it out. Our first step in the engineering design process is to define the problem. My dog, Leia, loves getting treats, but we both get bored of me just handing her the treats. Today, I'm going to try, try to create a fun new way to deliver treats to my client for the day, my dog, Leia. Next, we need to identify any constraints. This could include available materials and tools or how much time and space we have for our project. Uh, well, I know what size Leia's treats are and how much space I have in my living room. I also have a wide variety of materials that I can choose from. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been collecting various prototyping materials. The nice thing about mater engineering materials, you don't actually have to go out and buy any of this. I've just been collecting these from things from the house, like recyclables or things that might have gone in the trash. I've just kept them instead of throwing them out. So you can see some tools over here, like scissors and tape, various uh, like tennis balls and bouncy balls. These are twist ties and rubber bands. I've got some engineering paper so that I can draw my prototype out, toys, and just a lot of different things. So you can reuse materials rather than throw them out. And that's what we're going to do for this project. Next, let's brainstorm some ideas for treat delivery mechanisms. I could use an automated system where I push a button and it throws a treat but I don't have any equipment for electronics. 
What about a slingshot? That would be pretty cool. But it might shoot the treat too far or hit Leia, and I don't think she'd like that too much. Maybe a catapult? I've built one before, and I understand the basic principles, so that's good. It would also be easy to scale down to fit our space requirements. Now that we have a couple of ideas, we need to select one and try it out. I'm going to prototype and test the catapult idea, so let's see how it goes. So this is the first prototype I've built. I've got some cardboard boxes that are making up the base here. You can see there's a lot of tape holding it in place. I've also got an axle here. Attached to the axle, I've gotten these wooden pieces that are kind of making up the frame. And then I've got some cardboard pieces that are holding the frame together. And then a spoon here. So hopefully we're gonna launch this ping pong ball into the box over there. So I've made some improvements from the first iteration. So you can see I've added a holder for the ping pong ball that's made out of an egg carton. And then I've also added some weight to the base to try to hold it in place during launch. So here goes launch number two. Got a little bit farther. So for my third iteration of the prototype, I noticed as I was testing, things were starting to fall apart a little bit. So the spoon was starting to come off, so I added a little bit more support there with some tape. And then I also noticed that sometimes the arm would come all the way through here. So I added a block, kind of a blockage right here so that the arm would actually stop uh, instead of rotating all the way through. So I've started using a weight for launching. This is a four pound bag of sugar. So let's see how far the ping pong ball goes this time. Oh boy, way overshoot. So four pounds of sugar, too heavy. I'm trying a pound and a half of chocolate chips. Let's see how this works. Oh, that was really close. Yes! <laughs> Got it! So from the videos, you could see that I simulated a test using a ping pong ball as a treat and the box as the target zone. Then I went through cycles of prototyping, testing, and iterating to improve and find something that finally worked. The great thing about the engineering design process is that failure is okay. It's actually a chance to learn and grow and create a really great solution in the end. So now that you've seen my prototyping and testing, let's see if the final solution worked by trying it out with our client, Leia. Ready? Oh, <laughs> that was pretty close. Even though Leia didn't quite catch the treat, it was still a fun, new, and exciting treat delivery solution. What do you think of the solution I created? Can you see ways to improve it? Can you create a better solution? I'd love to see your ideas. Now that you know a little more about, the engineer, about engineering and the engineering design process, what problems will you solve? Who can you serve with your problem solving skills? And what can you build from what you have at home? If you are interested in learning more about engineering and want to try other fun projects, there are tons of resources available online or through apps that can be used on a smartphone or tablet but you don't need any of those things to try out engineering today. All you need is a problem to solve and the creativity to solve it. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that you get to try out engineering today.